Husband confessed to loving his cousin and expected me to move out so they could be together. I'm taking him to court. I've always known that my husband and his best friend from high school, Ria, have been extremely close but there was nothing suspicious about this friendship because it was literally Ria who had set me up with my husband when we met at our fashion designing course. So, it's not even like I had just met her recently and didn't know anything about her. By the time we graduated from the course in college, we had become great friends and admittedly, our friendship had become closer ever since I had started dating Josh, my now husband. It's not like Rhea and I didn't have anything in common but now that the situation is clear as ice to me, the commonness wasn't that much that we remained friends. It was kind of all a part of the act she put up to be closer to my husband and honestly, the more I think about it, the more it doesn't sound surprising to dot me if my husband did the same, used me to be closer to Rhea. My husband and I have had a typical relationship. There weren't any red flags, our communication seemed pretty smooth, we had a good sex life and yada yada. Honestly, if I didn't have this conversation with my husband and Rhea, I don't think I would have ever known what all was going on behind my back. I'm not sure this was because of how good they were at hiding all this or if I was just plainly blind and ignorant but yeah, I didn't really know so much was going on behind my back. Well, my husband and I started dating when he and I were around 17, got engaged at 20 and got married at 21. It's been 6 months since we've been married and ever since we got engaged, my husband and Rhea had been working on renovating the house we bought together. This house was huge so I thought it was pretty understandable that it took them about a year to renovate it and between that time period, Josh and I got married too. Our marriage was blissful, at least to me because I thought it brought us even closer than we were. Right after our marriage, I saw changes in Josh too, he had become more commutative about his feelings, fears and thoughts towards our relationship and although his apparent thoughts towards our relationship would often be negative, like him often discussing how he thought our marriage wouldn't work without any solid reason, red flag, I know. I still went on along with our relationship because I loved this man and thought his and my love both for each other and this relationship would heal everything. Unfortunately, I was soon to realize that the love only came from one side and was going to unrequited love was going to make our already hollow from the inside love come crashing down. You see, six months into our marriage and our house was done being renovated. I was so happy so I invited Rhea and some of my husband's other friends over for a meal because of the contributions they had made into the renovation of our house. It was a nice Saturday when everyone came along with their wives, we had a nice meal where we talked about me and my husband's future plans and answered some other questions you'd expect people to ask to a newly married couple. Things started to seem off as questions started rolling in about our house, the wives asking me about how I was planning to decorate my bedroom, how I was planning to do my closet, yada yada. I was happy to answer these questions because it felt nice to see someone interested in what I was doing. However, this wasn't the case for my husband. This man looked like he was getting increasingly uncomfortable and not just him but Rhea. The uncomfortableness was so much that it was quite visible in me and quite a few people asked my husband and Rhea if everything was okay. Well, of course, they said it was when nothing was okay. The day went on as obviously, there was nothing we could really do unless opened up to us and oh boy. When they did, I wasn't able to help them. Well, you see, this one meal turned into my husband's friends and their family staying over until late. I didn't have a problem with that because these people were really chill. Well, we all eventually started drinking by the time it was evening and this is when things really started going downhill. No one was crazy drunk, just a little buzzed I'd say except for guess who? My husband and Rhea. The two got drunk out of their minds within the span of an hour and now that I think about it, I feel like it was completely intentional because the two pulled me aside and told me that we needed to talk. Yes, not just my husband and I but Rhea too needed to be there. Well. I instantly had a weird feeling in my gut, like something was gonna go wrong so, obviously, having a bit too much to do after a long time and scrolling too much through reddit, I decided to start the audio recorder on my phone and get into the guest room and boy. Was it worth it? So, I'm sitting there as Rhea and my husband fumble to get their words in order as they start off by confessing how they both started liking each other right around the time the two met me. This alone was shocking to me, shocking enough that I started crying. Well, then they continued by saying that they didn't know what to do how they were scared, yada yada. It didn't make sense to me though since there wasn't much to be scared about here. If my husband would date me, then he would date Rhea too and after expressing this through anger, Josh drops this bombshell on me. Rhea is his cousin and I hadn't known this was because her parents were cut off from the family because of some issues. I was dumbfounded. Nothing made sense to me. How come this man who called this girl his best friend for years and claims to be in love with is suddenly his cousin? Well, I'm just sitting there shocked and I guess, Rhea and Josh both take my silence as a hint that I'm coming around this. That is when they put their condition onto me. Apparently, 
I should be accepting of their love and let them continue this affair all the while being married to Joshua according to them. We should make the best of this situation and share Josh, letting Rhea have him for a couple of days of the week and then letting me have him for a couple of days of the week. Not only that, I should also make separate living arrangements while the two have their time together. So, according to these people, I should move out of the house I paid for. This wasn't all y'all. Rhea thought of telling me the fact that they made a separate room for themselves instead of the walk-in closet that I wanted myself for their time because of course, they wouldn't want to make me uncomfortable while they have ASEX together in my house. I was disgusted and shocked. It took me a couple of minutes to get the words out of my mouth but I told them to be ready to see me in court because there was no way that I would move into the house. I also told them to pack it up and leave the house as soon as possible because there was no way I wanted to deal with them. I'm not sure why but this reaction shocked them. They started to berate me for not being considerate, telling me how I am judgmental because I can't accept true love and how this true love will always win over our documented marriage I wish them luck, especially Rhea who was running her mouth too much throughout the entire ordeal before going out and telling my husband's friends to leave and that they could now hold their get-togethers at Rhea's place. The room kinda fell silent, I guess everyone was hoping for more explanation but I had no energy. So, eventually, everyone awkwardly left along with Josh and Rhea. I just sat there stunned in the cold empty room reconsidering everything for hours until the texts started rolling and not just from my husband's friends but also his family calling me a jealous wife and a bad host. It broke my heart more. I'm not sure what my next move should be here, I want to sue my husband for the wrongly done renovations on my house and also divorce him as soon as possible. The house that we currently live in and the house we are going to move into both are under my name, gifted to me by my parents. What should I do here? Was I wrong for reacting the way that I did? Am I the a-hole for telling my husband and his affair partner that I was going to drag them to the court for having an affair and then kicking him and his friend out of the house? Update 1, it's been two weeks since everything went down and a lot has happened since. I first decided to meet up with my mother-in-law who wanted to talk. My mother-in-law and I have always had a great relationship. She was like a second mother to me after my mom had passed away so after everything that went down, she wanted to get my side of the story too. So, we met up at her house and discussed the entire situation. I showed her the recording and it was shocking to me that she wasn't surprised at this, like at all. With a couple of minutes of silence and seeing the nervousness on my face, she started off by telling me how Rhea's parents were cut off from the family for scamming a couple of relatives out of money. The only reason why Ray was allowed into the family was because of the close bond she and Josh had always shared eventually until one day they were caught kissing. Obviously, they were told to not repeat their actions and after that, they became pretty distant with each other and everyone just thought that was it. It was around this time that Josh met me as well and his family was happy that he finally left his chase behind Rhea but who knew, he had never stopped to begin with. Well, this all gave me the confirmation that this man is not worth anything. I instantly went to a lawyer and filed a lawsuit for the renovation of the house as well as a divorce and I know for a fact this lawsuit isn't going to look good on my husband's company who specializes in house renovations. Currently, he hasn't contacted me nor has Rhea or any of his friends which is good because I don't want to deal with them at all. I will update you all once more happens. Update 2, hi everyone. I had posted on this subreddit asking for advice regarding my husband who was having an affair with his cousin. They gave me a condition that I could only move into their house if I let them continue to have an affair. Well, since I was only married to him for a short while, we had an easy divorce but boy. The lawsuit against his company was messy. It wasn't long at all since, like I said, I had the recording of them admitting what they had done but the resistance coming from Josh's side took a while. At the end, I won it both and got paid to refix the damages done. As for Josh and Rhea. They got cut off by both, their families and friends. It was his mom who went out of her way to tell everyone what truly took place instead of Josh's sugar-coated version where apparently, I had kicked them out of my house because I was jealous of their friendship. Once his friends and family realized what had actually happened, not only were they disappointed but disgusted at the nature of their relationship. So, currently, the both of them share a run-down apartment after Josh got kicked out of his own business by his business partners, the friends who helped us renovate the apartment, all the while finding out that Rhea had been cheating on him the whole time. My life truly turned upside down within the span of 8 months but I think I feel proud of myself and ready to face the world with a new perspective after everything that happened. Thank you all for your amazing support. For context, I, 33 male, have been pretty much messed up since my childhood. I married the love of my life and together we have one child, 7 female. Sometime after she was born, my mental health began to decline and I was later diagnosed with PTSD, clinical depression, and an anxiety disorder. To spare all the details, I got help and was medicated. 
everything was great for a few years until the meds didn't seem to work any longer. 15 months ago I started messing around with street drugs and that quickly got out of control. By March I hit my worst, tried to do it alone because I hated the way the drugs were making me feel and I couldn't watch my family suffer any longer. April 28th was my last time ever using it. I packed my bags and headed off to rehab on May 2nd. When I hit 90 days, my counselor made the recommendation of visiting home for 24 hours. I thought it was perfect timing since in 4 days it would be my daughter's 7th birthday. I knew the party details ahead of time, I thought it would be a nice surprise for me to show up considering everyone knew how determined I've been to do right. On the way home, I stopped at two stores to buy gifts and get them packaged. That took a little longer than expected, in addition to the 1.5 hour drive home. I arrived home 15 minutes after the party started. My daughter immediately ran into my arms. My wife appeared stunned, then gave me a hug. My mother-in-law peeled out from around the corner and said, no, we're not having this. My wife walked away with her mother briefly. When she returned, she asked me to take a drug test and I agreed. I figured she had one on hand, but she didn't. She instructed me to leave and return with at least a 20 panel test. I was at the house for less than 10 minutes when my father-in-law pretty much pushed me out of the house and shut the door in my face. I went to the nearest Walgreens, but they only had a 12 panel test. Wife said to try CVS and I found the same thing there but they directed me where I could find such a test. Just as I was leaving the third store with the test in hand, my wife called to say I took too long and I'm not allowed at the party. I was crushed, she didn't want to hear it and hung up. I drove straight back to the rehab and was pretty down all day. I called her the next morning to ask how the party went and if our daughter liked what I got her. She ended up telling me I had given them red flags because I showed up late and unannounced. She said had I asked her if I could come, things would have been different. Monday morning when I got access to my phone, my father-in-law had left a text saying just because my wife had told me all about the party details, didn't mean I was actually invited. Ever since, I feel like I majorly messed up for ever going in the first place. I, 25 female, have a tricky relationship with my family of origin. My father died when I was five and from what I remember he was probably the better member of my family. My mom hated me always. I looked the most like dad so I figured that's why. I was the baby of the family with three older sisters, all who took after mom for hating me and I heard my whole childhood that I was ugly and would never find a guy to love me. This post is about my sister Grace who I have the worst relationship with. I got married at 20 and was so lucky to join an amazing family. My husband's mom especially is the best. She came from a sucky family too so she gets it and she has embraced me and her three other kids-in-law as her own kids. So has father-in-law. They are people I would gladly call my parents any day. Mother-in-law is extra special to me though. There's just something so caring about her. She never pushes herself on anyone but she will be there for you at the drop of a hat. She has supported me more trying to get an education than anyone in my family of origin ever has. Grace decided to track me down and drop by one day at random with her husband. It was awkward. But I didn't want to fight so I spent some time with her. While she was around mother-in-law stopped by and was just awesome. After about an hour of mother-in-law being there, Grace turned on me and said I didn't deserve that I had, and she stormed out, pulling her husband after her. She then contacted me on social media and ranted at me about being so smug about my mother-in-law when hers sucks and hates her guts and wouldn't do for her. I knew none of this. We had not talked in years before she showed up. I responded that it wasn't my fault her mother-in-law apparently sucks while mine is awesome. I said she shouldn't take it out on me. She called me a smug, gloating witch. I blocked her and she found an old Twitter account I had and I got the email saying she had messaged me more crap. Part of me wonders if saying her mother-in-law sucked and mine was awesome was just rubbing it in a little too much and a little too much of an a-hole. Am I the a-hole?